testes, testes, testes. Audio, 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 audio. Clean lens, clean lens. Check. Hello. You're watching the number one home improvement YouTube channel in the entire world. Today, I have a very interesting video for you. Normally, I put videos like this on my Handyman Business YouTube channel because it has to do with the business, the workshop. Uh, but this one is uh, a little bit different. I was provided this here to make a video and put it on this YouTube channel. What is this box? This is the Blue Eddy. This is the king of the hill when it comes to a fully self-contained solar generator. That's what they're calling them, solar generators. What it is, it's a big battery. It's got a power inverter to convert that battery into regular household voltage, like 110. You can plug a blender into this thing, plug a microwave into it. You can also plug 12 volt devices into it, such as my diesel heater. If you're interested in what a Chinese diesel heater is, there'll be a link in the description. Put a video out on my business channel about how I heat the workshop. So you're gonna have to hang with me and see me do some very, very dangerous, risky electrical maneuvers that I don't suggest you try. We're gonna power this entire workshop off of this by wiring it into the sub panel. The sub panel that's over on that wall there that you probably can't see. So first step one is for me to go in the house and turn the breaker off that powers that sub panel. Hey, I'm back. We're in the dark. There's no power in this workshop except for what's inside this box. So I'm gonna plug this box into some lights and we're gonna wire it into my electrical panel. Like I said, it's very dangerous. Don't try this at home. But if you did have an off-grid cabin or if you had a detached shed and you didn't want to run an overhead wire and you just felt like hooking up some solar panels and a solar generator this is how you might do it there we go we've got one two three four shop five shop lights plugged into this bad boy and i even have a filming light plugged in that i'm gonna turn on and we got lots of light got lots of light over here i'm gonna bring you up close just show you the screen there's no other screen like this it's a touch screen it will give you all the information you could ever dream of when monitoring a, uh, a system like this. You can see we're at 89%. We're using 324 watts on our AC load. Can charge USB devices. Um, I don't know what the PD 60 watt is. Oh, that's for like uh, charging an I, I something. One of those MacBooks. This one here is 12 volt, three amps. And this one here is a 12 volt, 25 amp output. This is where you would connect your camper into. If you wanted to run your entire 12 volt system on your camper off of this, you would plug it in there. Even though it looks like the power is on in here, it's not. So this underground feeder is dead. We're gonna take it all apart and we're gonna wire this into here. These two breakers here are 220 breakers. That's one thing that this system won't do is run your 220. Air compressor, table saw. But these ones over here, we will put these in a very specific spot so that we can use one side. Keep in mind, this is all powered off. This is 110 volts and this is 110 volts. This is your neutral and then your ground goes in the ground. We're gonna hook 110 up into this. So we're gonna use this look. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna use this side. Well, it's not just this side, kind of zigzags. I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. This is the plug that I'm going to be plugging into here, into this 12 2, and then into the panel. This is a little bit of a wrestling match here, but I'm about to get the last wire on. Here's a close up. Black to brass, white to bright, ground to the green. Now let's see if we can flip the cover over it. Again, uh, don't, don't go trying this at home. Got this plug end all hooked up. Don't plug this in and lick these.
you can see how the hot is tied into this side here and it will power a breaker that goes here breaker that goes here and then jumps down to here and a breaker that goes here and here so i'm going to hook these three up to this side and we'll plug it in okay here's the moment of truth i got the shop lights plugged back into the outlet in the ceiling up there and i have just this light here this light is this little filming light so we plug it in okay no sparks <laughs> not that there's not gonna be any sparks uh, let's see here we're doing 83 watts and that is what that one light there is so i got these little out of, out of uh order here i'm not sure even where they go though so. okay nothing happened there's our wow nice got all our lights on and uh this must be another outlet somewhere i also have a ceiling fan i've got these lamps going on so we're just gonna test this the capacity of this thing we're gonna set it up right here and start using tools so tools that i use on a regular basis they're mostly cordless tools i can plug this into any of the outlets in this workshop and it'll charge two other three other common tools are the bandsaw that i use for wood plastic things like that another one is my metal bandsaw right there i use my little grinder over there i also use the miter saw i also use this table saw this table saw is 220 we don't have 220 in this configuration and there is no way to get 220 out of this configuration unless you buy some other other equipment you can easily get a 110 table saw i have one it's out in my tool trailer it's my job site table saw so this is the metal band saw this is my little one by 30 belt grinder this is the paint room and this plugs into the wall over here i use this little wedge to stuff into the the trigger here to turn it on Put this in here. See, it says 732 watts. 20. I believe this is a 2000 watt inverter, and I think it'll sustain 2000 watts. We're not even close to it. I've got some other tools that are really going to push this, and we're going to do that at the end of the video. So, those of you who watched my handyman business tool video, you know what this is, and you know what channel number two is. That's my filter fan. This filter is plugged into that remote control receiver there and can turn it off. Now button number one is hooked up to a 60 horsepower shop vac that's located underneath the table saw. And it hooks up to this hose here and a bunch of other suction hoses. We're gonna save that to last to see if it trips and we end up finishing this video in the dark with flashlights. This here is a bandsaw. It's a pretty good sized bandsaw. It's a Delta bandsaw, 14 incher. And I use it for cutting wood, wood and other things. I'm going to push this green button here and let's hope it doesn't trip. There are a lot of safety features in this Blue Eddy so that you don't burn anything up. Ready, set, there we go. You straight cut. You do curves. is where things are gonna get stepped up will it power 10 inch miter saw now you may have noticed that this started up pretty slow this is a european miter saw and that's how it always starts i've discussed this in previous videos that it is kind of strange how these European tools are so slow to turn on. We peaked out at 2200 watts. Now that we know that it'll at least turn on, let's see if it'll cut something. It works. There's no faults. This is a touchscreen. If you get a fault, there'll be a little 
notification that shows up and you can click that and clear it and check it. Now before we get to the 60 horsepower shop vac that's hooked up to my dust collection, few specifics about this and I don't know much. I like real world testing and I think that's why these companies keep sending them to me. I show different things that they can be used for. A lot of van dwellers, you know the, the vegan van dwellers uh, use things like this. This one here is uh, a little on the heavy side for them. Uh, that's one reason that they sent this to me is because they know that I can at least lift 50 pounds. The van dwellers tend to be uh, very frail and dainty and you know it's, it's a requirement to be able to lift at least 50 pounds for a lot of jobs so it's it's no wonder that they decided to go live in a van and make their living uploading vegan recipes from their van the battery technology in here is different from any other battery technology in this type of device it's a lithium iron phosphate battery that means you can charge and discharge this up to 3,000 times. Most of the other ones that I have, their charge cycles are only like 600 to 800 times until you get that 80 or 60% reduced capacity. So this one here is 3,000 times. That's a long, long time. The solar input. Most of my other ones are limited by 300 watts. This one here, you can put 700 watts of solar in. So what's that mean? It means I need more solar panels now because I've got 300 watts uh, on the roof of my truck that I normally plug into the truck and the camper. Well, now I can more than double my solar capacity. Got my flashlight ready. So I hit channel one and the shop back turns on. Ready, set, go. Wow. That's crazy. It's only 1,700 watts. Don't need the flashlight. Well, there you have it. It powers everything I would use in this workshop. That's crazy. I, I just didn't imagine that it would do that. Uh, one other thing I could do is downsize my uh, air compressor to a 110 air compressor. I've got two of those. One's in my garage, one's in the tool trailer. The one I have out in the workshop is a big 220 compressor. I know for a fact that those smaller pancake compressors work off of smaller units. I've used them many times in the past off the smaller units. Wow, the workshop is off grid. I thought for sure that that 60 horsepower shop vac was gonna psh, put us in the dark. If you're interested in learning more about this, I'll put a link in the description below. That was pretty cool. Now I gotta rewire the dang panel so I get back on the grid. Goodbye. Okay, I've, I've got about nine minutes left on this SD card. I'm gonna see if I can get this swapped back over to back on the grid. Step one is I'm gonna take the lights and I got a few, four of them, maybe five of them. Yeah, that are on one string of lights so this this here if you can see me daisy chains from one two three four five so i'm going to unplug this one and plug it into here so i can still see now i'm going to kill the power to the panel and those other lights over there will go out so now the panel no longer has power but we still have still have lights in here. I really am surprised that come on that shop back didn't trip the safety circuitry inside the uh, the blue eddy there. There's another way you can do this is you can have this just plugged into another breaker and you flip that breaker on and it puts power <laughs> to this entire bar here. I'm sure someone's already put that in the comments. <laughs> Okay, get the hot out. I'm gonna take the neutral off. Just ground out. Okay, little pigtail is off. This ground back up. This doing on time three minutes in right. 
Okay, everything's reinstalled. Breakers are off. Now I go to the house and turn the breaker on. Okay. 220. 220, that's a 220 heater I had going on the other side. And lights. There we go. Well, that's it. I got a few seconds left on this SD card, so I got to talk fast. You're probably wondering, what's this big cable up here, and why is this weird ground going to it? Well, I uh, have another breaker here, another 220 breaker, that I can pop into this panel uh, for my welder. This powers up my welder and I can run this extension cord all the way over to the other room I can have it out here so that's what this is in case you're wondering this here is currently going to the other room it is a 220 electric heater it also serves as the plug for my 220 3 horsepower Powermatic 66 table saw it goes right in there and turns all right that's it for I guess that we'll call that the bonus footage goodbye a little more bonus on this thing. There's, well, it's feature packed and it has wireless charging, 15 watt wireless charging. Only thing, it doesn't work with older cell phones. This is a Note 8 Plus? No, it's an S8 Plus, I think. I, think, I don't even know what type of phone I have. I know it's uh, three, three years old at least and don't get any charging because it's an older wireless charging technology. Uh, again, check the links in the description to learn more about this. Goodbye.